So you guys know if you've been subscribed for a while that I've had a pretty bad experience with PewDiePie fans. If you want to see the drama, probably check out my videos from about two months ago where I made a video on him and then got attacked by his fans from 4chan. Uh, about maybe, I think it was six or maybe ten months ago, I made another one and I got attacked by his fans. Uh, and that was for really getting down in the weeds with the comments he has made uh, and I guess the political comments he's made outlining his views on certain topics. And while I'm going to talk about that a bit in this video, it's more about YouTube as a company and how they don't care about certain political beliefs and certain con controversies if you keep bringing in revenue for them. So if you guys haven't heard, PewDiePie has recently signed an exclusive streaming deal with YouTube. Now, he isn't much of a streamer and it's not like they're putting him away from any other streaming service. But if you want to nail down someone like this, the biggest YouTuber on the platform, the biggest gaming YouTuber on the platform as well, then you're going to have to fork up a lot of cash to get him to be exclusive. I'm, I'm sure his agent took them to the bank on this one, so let's just get into a few details. PewDiePie has signed an exclusive streaming deal with YouTube, GameSpot reports. PewDiePie was one of the earliest success stories of online gaming content, having had millions of followers and pulling in millions in revenue. Despite being one of YouTube's breakout stars, he found himself in hot water with a company after creating an anti-Semitic stunt, with YouTube cancelling his reality show and pulling him from many of its ads, but now it appears PewDiePie is back in the good books, having partnered with YouTube to stream exclusively with them, the Washington Post reports. While he pulls in a large audience, PewDiePie has repeatedly created controversy, usually followed by an apology, followed by dropping a racial slur in a live stream, followed by yet another apology. After dodging any major controversies in the last few years, I would disagree with that one, YouTube has given him a second chance. Unlike other big gaming content creators, PewDiePie has never focused on streaming as much as his regular video offerings, though that is looking to change with his new YouTube deal. Now, these guys mentioned a Washington Post report, so uh, I'm just going to read some of that as well. PewDiePie has been at the centre of several online controversies, most notably when he dropped the N-word on a live stream on YouTube. As he was playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, he apologised profusely for the incident and said at the time, it seems like I've learned nothing from all these past controversies. I'd argue that's still the case. The Wall Street Journal highlighted several of his clips in a now infamous 2017 article as evidence of PewDiePie's toxicity. PewDiePie and his fans said the clips were taken out of context, but the article resulted in several businesses severing relationships with him. This was the beginning of an ad apocalypse. So keep this in mind while watching this video. Of advertisers pulling out of YouTube and the service struggled to implement new rules to appease advertisers. Posts reach out to YouTube asking how the company and PewDiePie came to terms despite their differences and controversies in the past. A YouTube spokesperson responded, While we can't share specifics, our goal is to provide the best gaming content out there. We're excited to provide even more great content in a variety of formats all in one place. So yes, as that article outlined there, PewDiePie has had numerous controversies and I'd argue he is still pretty toxic. I've made videos about his comments on things like migration. I made videos about that whole ADL scandal. He essentially donated a large sum of money to the Anti-Defamation League and then pulled it because his fans had a massive backlash against him donating to, to a Jewish organization. Now, I have my own problems with them, but it comes from the ADL's views on Palestine and, and their views towards Palestinian people. Obviously, his fans do not share these concerns. They just really didn't want him to donate to a Jewish organization because, let's keep it real, a lot of PewDiePie fans, and I've experienced this firsthand, are on the alt-right. And again, check out my previous videos where I talk about being doxxed by these type of people. But I think this video is going to go away a bit from criticizing PewDiePie and more onto YouTube. So, like I said, I feel like he's had recent controversies. Those articles don't seem to think he has. I think it's tough with the ADL in particular should be a cause for concern. But let's talk about YouTube. They're saying they're, they're committed to bringing out the best gaming content. So they don't actually care that he said these things. And in a capitalist system, it's all about making money. So how are you going to make the most money out of your live streams? Get this gaming YouTuber and the biggest YouTuber on the platform to sign an exclusive deal with you where he'll commit to live streaming hopefully reinvigorating the YouTube live stream scene to compete with things like Twitch. And it's convenient for them to forget the past things he's done, including saying a racial slur on their platform, on a live stream on their platform. But it's convenient for them to forget because obviously capitalist people do not care about morals. They only pretend to care when they think it's affecting their business. So take the adpocalypse. YouTube tried to combat the backlash against PewDiePie, which he caused, remember, he caused this backlash 
by being an idiot, they try to implement way stricter rules. Now what happens is that is that essentially silences a lot of people, and you might not think it does. You might think it just affects your ability to make money, but it's well known that the popularity of a video and its recommendations are based on if it's monetized, because of course it makes financial sense. If a video is monetized, YouTube has more incentive to promote it because the views that that video gets is gonna make them more money because they take about a 50% cut of your ads. But it shows the difference in how they treat people. So for example, let's take me. I'm a leftist political content creator, right? Of course, I make some controversial videos and I accept that and I accept maybe if YouTube do not wanna monetize all of them. But take a look at my YouTube feed over the past two weeks plus. I have not had one video monetized. And I'm not even talking about a lot of controversial stuff at times. And at the very least, you could make the case, the stuff I'm talking about is also being talked about by the mainstream YouTube channels of news organizations like CNN. But their videos get monetized, so why don't mine? It's because they want to silence a lot of smaller creators, but also they seem to have a massive bias against left-wing creators because all our stuff seemingly gets demonetized while the most prominent political YouTubers on the platform are right-wingers and it's dominated by right-wingers. You could say that's more symbolic of the online space being more dominated by right-wingers, but I have had numerous stuff promoted to me, like Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, and I don't watch people who are sympathetic to their views. I sometimes watch content which mentions them, but their stuff gets promoted. In my own analytics, I can see my stuff nearly never gets recommended. Now, regardless of what you think of my content, for my channel's size, my average views are pretty good. And in terms of an up and coming channel, YouTube would look at my subs, my views, my engagement, and they should think, this guy is an up and coming channel, let's promote him more, because obviously people like this, he has a lot of views for his size, he has a lot of hours watched. But what essentially happens with the de demonetization on my videos is my channel is throttled and I can see that through the analytics. I can see my videos don't get recommended. I can search myself in the browser. For example, my last video on Alex Jones, I typed in basically the video topic. My video was like 30th down on the, on the videos. There were videos ahead of me which had about 20 views while mine had a thousand. But yeah, it really goes to two issues. One, they don't care what PewDiePie has done because he is a massive asset to them and he can make them money. And two, that they'll happily promote the right wing who also make their money because I think they're more popular on this platform, let's keep it real. But they'll happily fr throttle people like me who might be competing with both the right wing popular channels like Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson, but also the corporate channels like CNN. It's not a coincidence that in trending, it is normally dominated by either creators YouTube personally like and know are safe and they won't cause controversy, or they're, or they're dominated by corporations. And that's of course, because YouTube is pushing these people to help them make money. So it is ironic that a guy like PewDiePie can come in, make the whole platform worse for everyone, through the adpocalypse, through saying racial slurs on his live stream, through his various controversies, come in and do that, YouTube throttle channels like mine, and then a couple years later, when apparently he's not very controversial anymore, which I'd again argue that he is, they say, here is probably $10 million, stream exclusively on our platform, help us build our live streaming scene, we need you to help us. And again, like I said, he's, he's not live streaming, so it's not like he was like, oh, I'm going to Twitch, guys. It's just like, come on, help us out. In this way, it's not surprising YouTube is a capitalist corporation, and of course, it's going to do what it wants to make money. But what is funny is that it's done things to appease the advertisers by demonetizing my content, loads of different political channels' contents to say, look, this guy's made a video about Alex Jones. He's made a video about Tara Reid and Joe Biden. He's made a video about Jeff Goldblum or Dave Rubin. Too controversial for us, not gonna promote it, not gonna run ads on it. But here you go, PewDiePie, here's a load of money. We're gonna promote your channel nonstop and we're gonna promote corporate channels that talk about the same thing. And that is the essence, the hypocrisy of YouTube. And just like general society, we're not all playing by the same rules, even though there are YouTube laws and regulations in terms of what content can be monetized and what can't. And what often happens is that if you get your content reviewed, they'll say, yeah, that's fine. But of course, most people don't have the luxury of doing that. If you're a news channel, you don't have the luxury of waiting two or three days to get your content reviewed by a human. But of course, even in that regard, if you're a bigger creator, someone will review it straight away because you go up on the priority. So it is not an even playing field. And I think people 
especially on the left side of the political spectrum, need to realize this. YouTube is not really a viable platform for most of us because we just can't get the clicks, we can't get the likes. Not because our content is bad, you know, I showed you my page recently. My average views for a guy with 8,000 subs getting about 1,000 views a video is really, really good. But again, that should translate to my growth being better because it's clear my channel is something people watch. But because YouTube throttles these types of things, then that just doesn't happen. But don't take this for what it is. It's not a woe is me attitude. I can't handle people bigger than me. I can totally accept that. There's lots of leftist people on this platform who are way bigger than me and I like their content. Jim Sterling or some news outlets like TYT, people like The Majority Report, things like that. And I'm happy they have found relative success on this platform. But I think even they would tell you, let's not pretend it's even for people. Let's not pretend it's even between corporations and independent YouTubers. And let's not pretend it's even between right-wing YouTubers. And people like PewDiePie can get away with anything and make, get rewarded for it, even though they ruin it for the rest of us. And people like me and m many other channels who, who are in the partner program pretty much get everything demonetized, whether it's controversial or not just because it's covering politics. So this video is mainly about YouTube and PewDiePie. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel. If you want to find me on social media, follow me at The Cabin Ankle on Twitter. That is the main one, but also Instagram and Facebook. My Reddit is a big one for me as well. So my subreddit is r slash The Cabin My personal Reddit is u slash Tommy Cahill 1995. Please check out my Patreon in the description. And thanks to all my patrons as usual. Check out my WordPress as well. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.